Hi, I'm Lindsay Johnson. I'm from Canifit. I have been involved in sled dog sports for over 10 years now. I own my own sled dogs. I train and race my own sled dogs. And I've also created a business to um, teach others to get to enjoy these sports. I've created a business called Canifit. Um, and we teach people all over the world now how to get fit and how to enjoy sled dog sports such as canny cross, dog scooting and bike joring. So I'm going to be uh, talking a bit about the sport bike joring, explain what it's all about, showing you a bit of it in action and seeing if I can maybe get you guys interested in trying a wee bit of bike joring with your dog. So what is the sport? What is bike joring? Often people will say bike joring is mountain biking with a dog. Well, first of all, it comes from sled dog sports. Bike jor is what is classed as a mono discipline, which means one dog uh, per, the, per the team. So um, it's you, you wouldn't run a, a team of dogs on a bike, say you would run one dog on a bike. Often in sled dog races, bike jaw tends to be the fastest class. So the fastest athletes in bike jaw can often beat four, six and eight dog teams. They can really manoeuvre around the trails at high speeds. So for me, it's not really actually mountain biking with a dog. It's more like trail biking with the dog attached. However, it is easier to explain to people that, that don't know what the sport is just by saying mountain biking. So really it is a sled dog sport. Your dog would wear a sled dog type harness. They're attached to the front of the bike by a bungee line, a long line. And they're running at fast speeds out in front of your bike and pulling your bike along the trail. So you're going at a faster pace than what you, you would on your own, ideally. So you need more um, bigger forest-like trails as opposed to more technical rocky trails that you would see in mountain biking, which perhaps wouldn't be so safe to travel at speed or so kind on your dog's feet. If you've got a dog that is fit, they're active, they can, they can run at high speeds, uh, they can regulate their breathing. So for example, not a pug, not a breed that has a flat face and you love your bike, you love activity with your dog, and then absolutely give it a go. Now, my advice, if you're brand new to this, you obviously are wanting to get your dog used to wearing a harness and used to pulling a harness. The best way to start is by canny cross. Um, you can teach your dog the directional commands, you can teach them to pull, to run, and, uh, and work together as a team on the trails. Now, not everybody wants to run uh, or maybe perhaps you can't run you, you could maybe try canny hiking and again harness training your dog so this is how you would you would train the dog uh, before introducing them to the bike you want them to get used to those commands and used to taking vocal commands um, out in front without having to look back so that sort of thing is important bike jar isn't a, for complete beginners you know it, it is a bit complex but it's not to say that uh, people out there that don't have these elite type sled dog breeds um, can't do it. Of course they can. There is a lot of uh, breeds that are enjoying it recreationally. And at Canny Fit, we do classes, we do workshops, we do um, bike jaw intros and we'll do intro classes without the dogs to explain the whole setup and get how to get the dog used to being around the bike and the noise of the bike. So they're... Um, they feel confident around it. So my advice, if you're new to it, you haven't done it before, is get some training, get some classes, um, find somebody local to you to take you out. There's lots of information online about these types of sports and you're wanting to get the right kit. At Canny Fit, again, we can supply you with a kit at the classes if you're not local to us and then research and make sure you're getting a proper harness that's going to fit your dog nice and uh, comfortably. Okay, so what kit do you need? You need a bike and a dog. This one dog. <laughs> Not all the dogs all together. So you can see here on my bike that I have an antenna that's attached to the, the handlebars. And I've got my bungee line here. So you want your line to be around 2.8 meters long. You wrap your line 
round the headset of your bike and not on the antenna. This antenna here will keep the line out from tangling in your wheels. It won't always, but it will help. The thing that will stop your line from being tangled in the wheels is your brakes, of course. So we wrap my bungee line round the headset of a bike and then loop it up and over the O-ring of the antenna. And you can see here, it's fully elastic. And then I would clip that onto the, the tug line of my doll's harness. Twenty-nine inch wheels are the most popular for a bike jaw. You get up to the faster speeds with the dog, and hardtail as well tends to be the most popular choice for the sport. So you can see here that I have an antenna above the front wheel. The antenna is attached to the handlebars at the front of the bike, and I have my elastic bungee line. So the bungee line is actually attached to the bike and not the antenna. I wrap the bungee line round the headset of the bike. It comes all the way and then I loop it up through the O-ring of the antenna. And it would come all the way out and attach to the dog's harness. Line length should be round about 2.8 metres. You don't want anything too small or you could go into the back of the dog. Okay, we have Bolt and he is wearing an X-back harness, a sled dog type harness. You can see that it's full length, which is going to support him running and pulling. So you don't want a sort of standard pet shop harness. You want something that's going to free up his legs, his rib cage, allow his spine to flex, support his neck and his chest. So it's going to be suitable for the sport. You want to find open spaces to train basically so it's safe and you can you can see up ahead of you. What's really important is the surface type. So you want soft natural type trails like grass or natural dirt. That's going to be the most important thing that it's kind on the dog's feet and their joints when they're running at speed. You don't want to be um, bike joining your dogs on tarmac or on gravel a lot or um, stony paths that can bruise their pads. So think about your surface type when you're running your dog. So nice natural forest trails or um, grasslands is going to be ideal to train your dogs. Frequency of training is going to depend on the level that you're at. So those that compete at a high level are perhaps going to be training their dogs four to five times a week. Um, on wheels of some sort of training. Um, if you're, uh, if it's just recreational, you're just starting out, you're going to look to start off um, once a week to begin with uh, and take it from there. So you want to take your time when you're building up your mileage and take your time as you're um, increasing the speed as well. It's important that your dog is old enough to run in front of the bike. So age is an important factor. You want to wait um, maybe until they're at least 12 months before you start some light training. You want to uh, keep the mileage fairly low and the age for racing is 18 months. So before you can compete, your dog must be 18 months old, but that means that the dog must be trained beforehand before you race them. But it's important to keep the intensity and the frequency down as they're still growing. Treat them like you would uh, a young child. Lay it. Wait. Wait. Okay, let's go. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl.
for me, lean out, and go let her go. Here you go. You ready? You ready for me? Ready? Okay, let's go. So I've been competing in bike drawer for um, I think six or seven years. I took a few years out from competing on the bike. I um, went to compete two dog scooter. Um, I took a notion for that. I preferred that. And canny cross running with my dog is always my main sport. So that's always my number one class. And the wheels always sort of came second. I injured myself a couple of years ago and the bike was a way for me to, to keep active and to, uh, to keep in the sport and you know sort of to keep my fitness levels up until I was able to run again. So I decided to buy myself a, a better bike which really inspired me to do more bike draw training uh, uh, and more bike draw racing so I got back into um, competing competitively in bike draw when I got the shiny new bike because it always makes it um, much more pleasurable than you know riding an old heavier bike. I've competed um, at many national championship um, events and you know local events and fun events and I've been um, fortunate enough to come top three, top five uh, in a lot of the national uh, championship events which is um, extremely, um, I I'm extremely proud of that because um, I've never really found biking natural to me. I'm a wee bit of a scaredy cat. I don't particularly like technical mountain bike stuff but I love riding with my dogs and I love the thrill of the speed. Women in this sport are, you know, like way, way up there. The women in bike draw at the moment are just outstanding. Uh, the, the most recent World Championship sled dog events, the female who is the current World Champion actually beat all the men's time, which is pretty much normally unheard of. Um, it's just so, so impressive. And the women in the UK are the same. So the really top elite athletes in the UK are, you know, smashing the times out of the park. They're really beating a lot of the men's time as well. So for me to be able to compete against these women is like a, is a huge achievement in, its, in itself and it's a real thrill. So as the competition gets steeper and gets higher and gets better, I often come home from the races with a lower and lower position, but my own times have got higher, but that's fine because just to be in the field with these really impressive athletes and these women, um, you know, is a, an honour in itself. So I really love to see that the sport, um, for, 
for women in the sport, it, it's really it's really taken off, and it's not just that women are bigger in numbers, but the women you know are are showing that they're as good, if not better, than than some of the men. Of course, the men are fantastic as well, but it's just nice. It's nice to see, isn't it? Lindsay's been running for about 10 years in the dogs in her kennel and is an entrepreneur and chief delegator. Her kennel name is Cannie Fitz. And Lindsay's enjoying bike joining at national level for the first time in six years. She's recently learned how to use gears and that she doesn't need to use her brakes all the way around the trail. 20 seconds. 
But the thing that has let me down in the past has been just confidence and skill in the cornering, uh, breaking too late or breaking too much and losing a bit of power um, coming out of the corner. Um, that 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 sort that sort of thing. So for me, fitness um, fitness has always been pretty good. I've been able to to spin, you know, and keep up with the dogs. But um, working on skill and technique is something that I try and keep up to date. Uh, I tend to go out with the dogs a lot on the bike, and I just get get used to that type of speed and used to how the bike handles with the dogs pulling them. Um, so th there is no substitute for specific training. If you like. Okay, so my top five tips for somebody new to bike your art or if you're just starting out would be pick the right time of day. So make sure that the temperature is right for the dog. You want to pick the coolest temps of the day. You want low temperature and low humidity so it's comfortable for them when they're running. You don't want to run in hot temperatures or hot humidity. Also, you want to go out when it's the quietest time of the day. You don't want to go out when the trails are going to be busy with other users. Make sure that it's a nice quiet time and you're going to keep safe and keep other people safe and um, not, not get, in, get in the way of other people. Make sure you and the dog have an idea of what you're doing. So always go out with a kind of plan. You know what route you're going to do. You know how you're going to tackle it. Are you going to do interval training? You know, are you going to go out for a time or for mileage? Whatever, make sure there's some sort of structure to the session that you're doing and you've got a plan in mind before you set off. Always do less than what you think you and the dog can do. So it's not the same as training um, yourself. You're not really, you don't want to train a dog to exhaustion. You want to make sure that it's mentally uh, positive for them. Always leave them feeling like they could have done a little bit more. That way, every time you go out, they're going to enjoy it. They're going to want to give you their best. Try and not run them to exhaustion. That's that's not a good thing. Make sure that the dog is always well hydrated. They're pre-hydrated before they're running. There's lots of, uh, they've got access to clean, fresh water after. So hydration is a... Uh, um, it's a big one. Um, and number five would be don't get caught up on average splits or average mile pace. Make sure that it's fun and make sure that your number one priority is your dog, of course. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's been useful. If we can help out in any way, please come and visit us at CaniFit. Uh, at canny-fit.com you can get us on Facebook or Instagram uh, we would love to hear if you're interested in the sport um, or if you're starting to take it up and if we can assist in any way and then give us a shout enjoy and happy trails